Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of Design Underground. I am Rob Design Epotamus Irving. I'm Keith Dunkelzah McCormick. And today we're going to be a little more leaning into the process of design rather than just sheer facts. And today's major topic is sort of mining, but mostly math. <laughs> so let's talk about the puzzle we were trying to solve this week before we get too far into the, the actual process of it. We are setting up our mining in, in lovely blueprint in Unreal Editor. And mining is a very simple thing on the face of it. You take a block, you shoot a laser at it, it breaks. Kind of like that. Everything is spiffy. Yeah. The number of things behind it, though, is, is a little more complex. Um, we have a lot of different variables that go into mining. Can you name them all off the top of your head, do you think? Uh, there was power, laser levels, laser speed, um, purity, efficiency, hardness. That's the block. Yeah. The other five are all the laser. And I think that was it. That's, those are the ones we were working with. Okay. See, you, 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 hit, you hit everyone on my list. So we have all of these different stats because you can upgrade your mining laser in different ways. All um, to make it do that. Yeah, to, to make holes in things. And we wanted to make, hopefully, a system that would accommodate all these and give us mm -hmm. result, a certain set of results. Now, we had estimated initially that maybe for the absolute best laser and the softest mining block, you would be through it in about a second. Okay, that's pretty reasonable. Top end, when you have the absolute worst mining laser, so if you're out there in your typhoon and you decide you want to drill through a palisite block, it's going to take a long mm. time. Typhoon, not good at mining. It's about three years? Yeah, approximately three, three to four years. Right? Okay. Um, but we decided that that was a little punishing, so we went from in the 15 to 16 second range, which is a very, very long time. It's still a long time. Don't yeah. do that in the middle of a firefight. But if you're in a typhoon mining, you're probably doing the wrong job. Mm. So given those constraints and all the different stats, and starting from some very simple basic assumptions that we kind of want to, if we can, use the same scale on the mining laser levels at one to four that we use on the laser. Makes sense. Makes you perfect sense. To... We decided it was going to be time to settle down and do some math. Now, <laughs> Seeing it again gives me bad flashbacks. Um, the, the idea that we started with is, is we wanted to have a ramp up time. Basically nothing's mm -hmm. happening, you're heating up the block, and then a breakdown time where it collapses into its rock. So we took all these numbers and all these assumptions we made about all these numbers and started deriving, well, started deriving equations. <laughs> Day one, part one, I was in there in my office just going, oh, I'll have this done in two hours. About hour four, you wandered in. <laughs> well, I wandered in because it was near the end of the day and I needed your blog to be published. What is the man genius doing in here? <laughs> I find him standing in front of the whiteboard. Glazed over. <laughs> Smoke coming out of the ears. So the end result of day one was we made too many assumptions and oh, goodness gracious. Oh, we, are we talking math? We're talking about math. math. Oh, this You're is in the wrong idea. room. <laughs> Ah, the hijinks never end. So we got to the end of the day, found out that all of our assumptions put together and any amount of derivation that we could possibly do on one whiteboard, and that was really only the first of two full whiteboards on one day, day well, one. Well, to be fair, my dungeon master math formulas weren't exactly helping at that point. <laughs> I kept reversing the order of operations. The end result was failure. Yeah. Utter failure. Day two! Guess what? More whiteboard <laughs> math. <laughs> now look! Okay, after day one of frustration, the first thing you do is you go, okay, I'm going to reapproach this. It took a little longer, it taking a little longer than I thought. But look, first thing you do is get organized. I got all the, the variables all lined up very nicely, mm -hmm. set up it in the side, got the whole whiteboard cleaned off so I had room for all my math. Yeah. Because I realized that it was taking a lot more room than I wanted. Um, and that was, this was about the point when you kind of wandered off. Well, yeah, I have other things that I need to be doing. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you decided that you were going to solve this on your own. <laughs> well, to be fair, that took me all about 10 minutes, that thing that I showed you. See, this, this is the problem. We, we started out with 
the goal of making a system, a system that could handle anything, that could have any set of numbers in it, and would solve this problem and give us the results we wanted. And day two, we failed <laughs> to make the system. This time, Tyler came in and helped there. Mm -hmm. we, so, so we started, we created this vortex of math sucking that was pulling in everyone in the company at various times trying to work math on the whiteboard and, well, collaboratively failing to get a system that handled all of the things that we wanted. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'd gone back to doing all the other stuff I'm doing, much of which involves spreadsheets. And so I made Rob a spreadsheet. And here's the thing. It's, it's great, the idea of having a system that you can derive that does the things you want. That's, that's one functional way of doing design. Instead, you start with results and go, OK, what gets me these results? which, hey, that's really great and all, but... It's not a system. Yeah. So I looked at his spreadsheet on, I guess that was Tuesday night. Yeah, it was day two. And I was like, well, that's, that's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Those answers look pretty good, but not exactly the way I wanted it, the system that's, to that's work. That's true. They were not exactly right, and it was a simpler... Day three, we skip into some more math, because, you know, if he can solve it on a spreadsheet, I can solve it on a whiteboard, right? So we get day three's math going. It's all still nice and organized. You start seeing little red numbers written up there as we get answers that work. Mm. After that, that whiteboard, again, was erased like 16 times over the course of three days. Filled up, erased, filled up. Day three, success. We found numbers that actually worked to make the system do the things we wanted to do with about the results we wanted to do. And it hit the end points, but the results were awful. Yeah. I Soon to remember being really wildly skewed at the ends there. The the auger was taking one to three seconds to get through all the blocks. The the typhoon was taking fourteen to sixteen seconds to get through all the different blocks. This is not a good result. Yeah, the the typhoon should not take that long to get through like the weakest, softest rock. It's still serviceable when it needs to do the simple drilling, which is I need to get from this place to this place. It should it, it should, should be, be able to do it in a reasonable yeah. amount of time without, you know, distracting from the combat. So, while we did find an answer or a system that met all our criteria initially, the, the actual system itself, the actual results were not acceptable. I mean, it comes a point when you look at it and go, no, that's just not going to be fine. So, I left the whiteboard behind, pulled out the spreadsheet, <laughs> and took the results-based solution and said, okay, well, this doesn't do exactly the things I want. There's no ramp-up time here, but I have a starting place. Took all those numbers, plugged them in, broke it into a ramp-up, and using the formulas you had created, said, well, if we use a similar formula here, here's my ramp-up, here's my, my breakdown, and I put them together, and the end results are approximately one second to approximately 14 yeah. seconds, and the spread is much more even. The, the quickest that the typhoon could do on a, on a very soft block would be like three seconds, three and a half seconds. Much, much better result. So voila, spreadsheets win. Sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes you just start with an answer and you work backwards from it. Uh, uh, I have to say that what, what we get out of this, the moral of the story as it were, okay, number one, there's not a system for everything. And sometimes it's, even if there is a system for everything, it's not time effective to, to, to do that, to drive it. Just get the answers you want. Be happy with it. Um, idea number two, don't love your baby too much, ever. It's the first rule I teach any designer that I hire is you're going to have ideas, you're going to have good ideas, you're going to have bad ideas, but if you walk in there defensively saying, you know, don't attack my idea, because good design involves, you know, poking at every idea to see if you can improve it. I have a lot of bad ideas. I have a lot of bad ideas, too. It's, it's just, it's going to happen. You know, not everything's going to work, but it's a collaborative thing. If one person is having all your ideas, your project is pretty much doomed to fail because you're, you're, you're wasting all this talent around you mm -hmm. by, by shutting it out. Plus, it'll demoralize your team and everyone will leave. Yeah. You don't want to well, have that happen. That's one of the great things here, though. We have a lot of people with a lot of good ideas and bad ideas. And we work together. Yeah. And, you know, pursue a bad idea for a, a little while. <laughs> but at some point, the reality has to settle in and you go with what works. So... Well, that's, that's the epic saga of math and how to avoid it. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are better than math. So thanks for tuning in.
I'm Rob Irvy. I'm Keith McCormick. See you next time. Underground. <laughs>